back from my little hiatus of neck problems. Um, and of course the neck problems are still there, but what are you going to do? And I was going to wear these last week because I had found them at Walmart a few weeks ago and I just thought they were adorable. They were $4. And so I thought they were super cute and I thought, you know, I should wear them. I was going to wear them last week, but like I said, my neck was really giving me some fits. So thanks you guys for sending me the love that you sent me regarding my bad neck. Um, yeah, it's just one of those crazy deals where... I, you know, I've had a couple injuries to it. I've had a water skiing accident and a car accident back in the day. And it's just never been uh, good. Um, and every once in a while it just really acts up and then it just gives me fits and bleh. Anyways, yeah, Batwoman, isn't that funny? And I have a, a new setup down here. I, because of my neck, I had my husband and my son. I bought some of those little, um, they're supposed to be things that like raise your bed. Those little plastic cups that are like, I don't know, six inches tall. And I think people use them to raise their beds up off the floor a little bit so you can use that for storage. So I thought, well, why can't I lift my stamp table up a little bit so that when I, cause I'm a stand up stamper. So while I'm standing here stamping, um, I'm not bending my neck over quite as much to see the table. Um, and so they did do that for me. They put um, the cups under the legs of my table. And so then I had to get a different chair to work at this table. So now I have a stool that I got at Walmart also. Walmart has a lot of stuff, even though I ain't going there. It's literally the only place we have in our town to shop. So you have to go there if you want anything, uh, including bad ears, right? So um, the table's higher. I also got um, this faux wood planking stuff that I have um, underneath. So you guys will see it when I flip my camera down uh, because I used to have like a piece of poster board covered with um, like wood grain paper. But the problem with that paper was that it, it would tear and it, it looked horrible. I've had it down here for years and it looked horrible. I've scraped it. I've scuffed it. I stamped on it and it's just a mess. And so I needed something else. So I was able to find this super cheap vinyl flooring. I actually got it on eBay. I mean, I'm not a huge eBay fan or whatever, but I do sometimes shop there for random things and I had gone to my local hardware store to get some of this flooring but they wouldn't sell it by the individual piece because I had heard from other people in other towns that you can go there and buy individual planks of this stuff and then you can hook it together and you can use it as your stamping surface because then you can wipe it off if you get ink on it. Well, I've tried uh, the place here in town and I've tried to place some places in Billings. They all told me emphatically, no, we do not sell single sheets of that stuff, which is a huge bummer. So I happened to be, I got, I've been, um, when I first moved to Wyoming and I got my very first computer like 15 years ago, I signed up for an eBay account because I wanted to buy kids clothes for my daughter. Actually, that would have been 20 years ago because she's 19. Anyway, so I've been a PayPal and eBay member for about 20 years. Um, and I used to buy a lot of kids' clothes and sell a lot of kids' clothes on there. Um, and so they had gifted me a $25 coupon as a thank you for being a customer of theirs for however long. It's been 20 years. And so I was trying to find something to spend my $25 coupon on. And it dawned on me. I thought, well, hey, I wonder if I can get some of this faux flooring, this planking stuff. And so I found some in a color that looked like the color that I would like to have. And so I bought it. It was a box of, I think, 10, uh, 10 planks. I think it was like 23, $25. So it was about $25 because I got to use my whole gift card on it. So that's what my, my new stamping surface is. And I'm super excited about it because um, it's just really nice. Now this stuff is pretty flimsy. I don't know as though I would put it on a floor, honestly. But for what I'm using it for, it's perfect. So there you go. Okay, so we've talked about my silly, um, oh, I'm trying to see, what the heck? No, no, no. Hello. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Sorry. I've got my iPad on here and I wanted to have it so I can see um, with comments and everything, but I don't know how to operate this thing. Um, and I never have known how to operate this. Normally I have to have my kids come down here and help me because I don't know how to operate it. Um, but I'm trying to see myself live on here. But all it wants to do is be gigantic. Okay, anyway, we're not even going to mess with it because who cares? Okay, so who's here? We've got Carol here and Teresa. Ooh, Teresa, I'm excited that you're here. Uh, we have Valerie and Pam and Tina and Donna and Linda and Sonia. And thank you guys for sharing. And 
yes, you can call me Batwoman. Isn't that something just so cute? Four dollars. Um, yeah, I have another set of, well, it's not bat ears, it's cat ears. Because a long time ago, I went to a Halloween party when I was in my early 20s, and I was a cat. And I had, this is back when I could wear a bodysuit. So I had a unitard, like a one-piece bodysuit. Um, it was black. I had black heels on. I had uh, safety pinned a tail to my to the back of me. And I had these super cute ears. And I, this is the funniest, this is the craziest story. I was in Red Lodge, Montana, which is a fairly small town in case you are not aware. And we were at this bar, we were dancing and I felt somebody jerk on my tail. And I turned around and nobody was acting like they had done it. And I thought, well, that's kind of weird. Well, then it happened again. And I turned around and I happened to look down and there was a little person, like a dwarf person standing there, a guy yanking on my tail. Oh my gosh, it was the funniest thing ever. He just thought he was hilarious because, of course, when I turned around, he was there, but I didn't see him because, you know, I had heels on. I'm already 5'7", so with heels, I was like 5'10", and I didn't see him the first time. But that's totally off topic. It's not even what we're here to talk about. But that's how I got on the topic of the bat ears and my cat ears because of my Halloween costume of 100 years ago. So anyways, I no longer wear the unitard suit. I don't even know where that is, but Lord knows I can never fit into that sucker now. Anyway, that's funny. So... Since I see Teresa on here, I have a gift to give away to those of you who like comment on my video, share my video, because I appreciate that so much because it really helps my my channel. It helps me able it helps me be able to grow my Facebook reach a little bit when you guys are sharing to your friends and then hopefully they'll watch me and they'll share to their friends. So that really helps me a lot. So I wanted to thank you guys for that. So I try to give away a gift every week. And this week, Teresa has been a customer of mine for, oh my gosh, Teresa, I don't even know how long, 10 years, maybe maybe longer. And so I did pick Teresa as a winner. She is a faithful Facebook live watcher and I appreciate her very much. So Teresa, I have these little cute butterflies that I'll be sending you in the mail. So watch for those. So I have your address. You don't need to message that to me. So congratulations to Teresa Farmer and she is watching. So I was very excited to see her on here so I could gift her with that. Okay. So what else is going on? Um, oh, the last time I was live, we made some fun cards. We made this Thanksgiving card using the uh, Plaid Tidings Designer Series paper and then the Word Wishes die for the Happy and the Thanksgiving. And then these little pumpkins come from the Gather Together uh, bundle. I did one of these three cards. I can't remember which one I even made. I think it was the one with the tree. Um, they're all the same. They use the ta blah, 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 trimming the which I mean the town, designer series paper, um, strips. So it's a good way to use up your strips of designer series paper. And we made three, and we made one, but I already had two done. So there's three ideas for you. Um, so those are super cute. And these papers, both of these are on sale in October for uh, $9.78. So they're 15% off. Then the other card I demonstrated was this really gorgeous snowflake card um, where we kind of stamped the panel and then we cut it apart and then we placed it on the Highland Heather. So that just gives a kind of an interesting look about it, I kind of think. So, so yay. So a good evening, Pam and Valida. That's a very interesting name. Oh, and Barbara. Nice name, Barbara. Um, and Trudy and Louise and Nina. Hello, Nina. Nina is one of my team members and Kathy's here. Kathy is also one of my team members. Um... Hello, girls, and Susan is here. Oh, thank you, Susan. She likes my bad ears. I do, too. I think they're kind of fun. So anyways, thank you again for joining me tonight. I have some super cute projects for you guys. I'm so excited. Um, oh, I need to grab something that's just right out of my reach. Almost out of my reach. And so, yeah, there's a little bit different viewpoint or vantage point for you guys watching. And I feel my camera is tilted. I haven't quite mastered this super cheap uh, tripod that I have that I've had for forever and my camera's on there a little bit wonky so I'm not sure yeah looking at myself on the display here my whole house looks a little wonky so sorry about that I'm going to try to get that fixed we'll see if I can maybe get myself a new tripod or something like that who knows I hate spending money on stuff like that it's like bras and underwear and socks I hate spending money on stuff like that I'd rather buy you know bad ears just saying okay so I think I'm going to flip the camera. I have a few little announcements about, you know, what's going on in the Stampin' Up! world to let you know about, and then we will get on with our stamping. So let me go ahead and flip this. And I know that this is going to be kind of annoying, but I'm going to try to lower this down a little bit so that it's a little closer to my work surface. 
Oh, yeah, I need to get a new a new tripod. Absolutely need a new tripod. Okay. That is completely wonky. Oh my gosh. What the heck am I going to do? Can I sort of fix it by doing that? I've got some like little pieces of paper under my camera here, under my phone. Um, and we'll try to try to position the camera so it's somewhat straight and even so because I that bothers me when I'm watching videos and things are out of whack but maybe it's just me because I'm a little bit anal so okay sorry you guys Ugh, I can't fix it so hopefully that's not going to bother you too much it's going to bother me but hopefully it doesn't bother you okay so this is my new planking check it out isn't that nice and so I can like stamp on it and then wipe it off and yay I'm very excited about it honestly Okay, so again, we have our Design of Series paper sale. I did show you these couple papers here, the plaid tidings and the trimming of the town. Those are both on sale um, along with a bunch of others. And you can find those uh, by going to my store, which is a link in the description of this video. So check that out. Here's some kind of samples of them. Um, and of course, if you do place your order with me, which I would love for you to do so, um, here's my host code for the month. And I do have a free tutorial for you for that. What else do we have here? Ooh, my Create Where You Are October Kit to Go. Now, I just did my kickoff video for this class last night, and I posted it to my YouTube channel. I'm trying to find my card. Here it is. Oh, it's upside down. Look at this. Isn't this fun? This uses the Poinsettia Petals, Poinsettia Petals bundle. Excuse me. I don't want to have anybody yell at me for saying that incorrectly. And so I created this cute little pocket card for a gift card. Woohoo! And there's a Starbucks card in there. Isn't that adorable? And so I did use some of the stamps and uh, the sentiment from the bundle. And then, of course, I used some of the dies here to create my poinsettia. And I just thought this was super fun. So there is, um, this is on my YouTube channel. And I think you can get there just by going to YouTube and looking for Barb Stamps. And you'll find it. And the tutorial for this card is on there. So this is actually one of the cards that you receive in the class. So this is the class. It uses the poinsettia uh, petals bundle. And you get half a package of this designer series paper um, in your kit. You also get a half a package and they're all cut to six by six. So these papers will be in this package with these papers. You get two of our gold foil sheets. You get a half a pack of the points or plush, plush point setia designer series paper. It's vellum with these awesome velvety accents. And these two pieces, uh, this piece here with these little, um, holly berries I guess they are and the leaves you can die cut these with the dies in the die set along with the poinsettias on this piece here you can also die cut those so it's a really cool bundle if you already have it you can purchase just the kit to go which is the supplies for eight cards four cards two of each of course this is one of them so you'll get the supplies to create two of these plus the supplies to create six other cards um, they come with envelopes you also get a half a pack of the gorgeous beaded pearls. Now, this one I did color in my video, so they do come uh, plain white, but I did color mine. You also get a half a roll of the white. No, well, this is not even the right ribbon. What the heck, Barb? Come on. Where did I put it? Oh, here we go. Well, this is a brand new roll. This is our uh, silver edged metallic ribbon the white and then the red uh, sheer ribbon. So you get a half a roll of each of those, half a pack of those, half a pack of this, half a pack of this, and then two sheets of gold foil and all the supplies to create eight cards for 45 bucks. Now, if you don't have the bundle and you want the bundle, you can add it to your kit for $65. So it'd be 110 for the bundle and the entire class. Now I also will send you a PDF file with links to videos for all the cards and instructions. So it's a lot of stuff for 45 bucks. So if you're interested in that, the links are below the video. Okay. And my other class for the month is the Snowflake Wishes online class. Here's some teasers of some of the cards that are in the class. This is a nine card class. Um, the class by itself is $20. If you want the pre-cut cardstock kit with the blue adhesive gems and the iridescent ribbon, it's $45. And you'll get the supplies to create the nine cards. Um, the gems and the ribbon and then the PDF with the links to the videos. Now you'll have to supply your own bundle, the Snowflake Wishes bundle, unless you want to purchase the whole bundle from me, then you get everything else for free and you'll need some stamps and, um, ink, that kind of stuff. And of course the stamp and cut and emboss machine to die cut all these amazing snowflakes. Okay. Also, this is one of my most popular things. This is the 13th or 14th year. Now I can't remember that I have been offering 12 weeks of holidays projects. 
I started them on Sunday. They're going to go out every Sunday from now until, I think it's a Sunday after Christmas, I'll end with a kind of a Valentine project set. So every week I send you an email with a uh, tutorial for a set of projects using one of the bundles in our holiday catalog. The one that I just sent out used the Magic in the Night, so it was a Halloween set. The next two are going to be fall-ish with the Gilded Autumn and the Love of Leaves. Then we'll have uh, eight weeks of Christmas and then one Valentine. And Kathy just commented that she loves my holiday projects. And she said that's the reason she signed up to be a demonstrator with me. So thanks, Kathy. <laughs> and now we're fabulous friends, too. So those already started. If you want to receive these, you must sign up for my newsletter to get them. The link to my newsletter is in the description of this video. Or you can go to my blog and you can find the link there also. But the only way you get these is if you're on my newsletter list. I don't share the projects anywhere else except for one project. Um, I do a collaboration with a bunch of other demonstrators, so I do share my own project. I haven't shared it yet, but I will eventually throughout the holiday season. So there you go for that. Coming up next month, we have our Kirby Celebrations uh, bundle of products that will be available to customers. It's available now to demonstrators. So the reason I'm talking about this right now is because if you want to join my team of demonstrators, um, you can add this to your kit if you want. It's a really cool set um, of these really fun Kirby dies. You can see some of the samples here. I have the set, but it's somewhere in a different room and I don't, I don't feel like going to get it. And you probably don't want to see it right now anyway. But just know that if you sign up to be a demonstrator in September, nope, it's October now, it's October, in October, Barb, then you can add this to your kit if you want. Otherwise, you can wait till next month. You can order it from me. Yay! All right, Totally Techniques Online Club. I do this every month. If you place a $30 or more order with me in my online store using my monthly host code, which is right up here, um, then and you let me know that you want to join the club. You have to let me know you want to join the club. And then I will mail you in the mail every month um, a technique card telling you how to make the technique of the month with a sample and then an actual greeting card using the technique of the month and this was the for um september so triple time stamping so all the people in the club got this card and then they got this technique card so if you're interested in that send me an email let me know and then start ordering from me uh the joy to the world paper pumpkin kit is coming out it is going to be a holiday themed kit and i believe it's a gift card holders if i remember correctly so i kind of think this christmas might be a little bit more gift card holders or gift cards being gifted to people uh maybe rather than gifts because people don't um aren't going to be able to get out and shop that kind of thing so either way um, they're going to be super cute. I think they're kind of like a gingerbread theme. So I haven't actually seen the kit, so don't try to say, oh, you've seen the kit, Bard. No, I haven't. It's a surprise for everyone. Okay. I still have some kits for my Arrange a Wreath online class. I have, I think, one kit left for my Gilded Autumn, uh, cardstock kit for my Gilded Autumn class. And I, oh, I don't even have any kits left for that. So let's just bypass that all together. Okay. Let me get the stuff for my first project. And we'll stamp because that's literally why you're here. Oh, uh, we'll just do this first. Okay. I need to get some things here. That, that. We've got some ink. Uh, this is the card that inspired me for the card that I'm going to make for you right now. I made that card uh, a couple of years ago. This was a celebration set that uh, you could receive during celebration a couple of years ago. And I made this card and I found it. Because I keep, I keep some of the cards that I make... Um, just because I like the layout, or this is kind of like a technique -y type card in a sense because it's a little bit different style. Um, but I do keep some of those things so that I can come back and recreate them because, you know, it's an awesome layout and why not make it again? You know what I'm saying? Milk it for all it's worth, right? Okay, so we're going to use the Poinsettia Petals Bundle to make this card. And let's see, I got to get all my pieces and parts here. Okay, this is just a uh, quarter sheet of cardstock. The color would not matter at all. We're just going to use this to make sure that um, when we attach our card together, it's going to fit in an envelope because if it goes out of the border of this piece of cardstock, then it's not going to fit in your envelope. So when you're putting it together, you want to make sure that you're using a quarter sheet of cardstock so that you make sure that you don't screw it up because <laughs> I've done that. Of course, you guys believe me because I screw up all the time. Okay. So the card base is a four and a quarter by four and a quarter. In this case, I'm using crumb cake. Well, actually I used crumb cake on that one too. So I'm using crumb cake. Then I have a four by four piece of crumb cake that I ran through my Dainty Diamonds um, embossing folder and my Stampin' Cut and Emboss Machine because the Stampin' Cut and Emboss Machine is literally my most favorite thing in the whole wide world. I just realized I didn't have one of my lights turned on. Um, 
I've had a big shot ever since Stampin' Up! started selling a big shot and I thought it was amazing. But when I got the Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine, I realized how not amazing the big shot is and how amazing the Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine is. It cuts things, oh my gosh, one time. I run things through one time and all the bits are cut. Whereas in my big shot, I had to run them through five, ten times. I had to move it around on the platform and oh, it was just a nightmare. And sometimes even then the stuff wouldn't come cut out. So anyways, I can't rave about it enough. All right, so four and a quarter by four and a quarter, four by four. This piece is for the inside. This is also a four by four. Then we have a two and three quarter by three and a half piece of white. And then a three by, th or no, this is a three and an eighth by three and five eighths piece of red. Okay, then we also have, what do I do with it? Oh. these amazing foil sheets in the holiday catalog. We have red and green, and oh my gosh, aren't they pretty? Well, of course, my lights are glaring on them severely, but they are just gorgeous. So they're red and green. Um, I guess I would say they're real red and shaded spruce, even though they might not be exactly those colors. That's kind of what I think they are. So I have taken the three uh, poinsettia leaves and run them through my Stampin' Cut and Boss machine. And with the cutting die and the embossing die. Hold on. Okay. So when I say that, this is actually two different dies. This outer piece here is the cutting die. And then this little inside piece is the embossing part of that. So I pretty much, for the most part, at least since I've gotten this, I've really only used it for uh, die cutting, not actually cutting and then or stamping and then cutting. But I can easily peel this off because I used washi tape to stick it down. So I can easily just use this piece if that's what I want to do. And then I can put it back together, kind of line it up so that there's even spacing around the whole thing. And then I'll just tack my washi tape back down. So that's what I've done. So I did that with all three of them. And so I have one of each size out of the red foil. Those are some other random dies that came with me when I hustled my tushy over here. Okay, so we have these. So we are going to adhere these together. And I'm trying to think what I want to use. I guess I'm going to use some seal. I'm going to bring in a silicone mat only because I don't want to get glue all over my new planking here. So any glue that um, misses my uh, poinsettias here will just go onto my silicone mat and I can get rid of that really easily. So I'm gonna offset each of these when I stick them down, just like that. And then I'll bring in the biggest one and we'll throw some adhesive in the center of that. And again, we will offset. So now I have a very full uh, poinsettia flower here. Then if you want, you can take a bone folder and kind of curl them a little bit. So I like to curl the big bottom petals kind of down and then the medium petals up a little bit. And I'm just gently, gently doing this because I don't want to fold the paper. And then these little ones, again, I like to go down. So I'm just kind of doing it opposite. Now you could do it however you want. This is just how I find that I think it's kind of fun. So there we go. And that that's literally my whole focal point is going to be that. So I'm going to add this to my piece of paper with uh, probably three dimensionals here in the center. Peel the backings off. Ugh, I have literally no fingernails. And it's getting to be a little bit chillier here. I don't know how it is where you guys live, but where we live, it's getting a little chillier. And when I when it gets chilly, my fingers crack because I sit down here and work with paper all dang day. And then my fingers crack and then they hurt. And then it's just a real bummer. But again, who cares, right? Because I'm still going to stamp. All right. So now I'm going to add this to my layer of real red. Oh my gosh. A couple hours ago, I was down here prepping for this uh, class and I happened to look over my large table that's right behind me onto the floor and there was, I don't know what this thing is. I mean, I want to say it was a centipede because that's exactly what it looked like. It was a long, it was about two inches long. It was very skinny and it had a million legs and it was moving 
you know, like weave it around like that. It was disgusting. And I was like, oh my word, what are you doing in here? So I had to kill it. And what I did, because ugh, it was just yucky, I threw a piece of paper over the top of it and then I stepped on it with my slippers. <laughs> and then I tossed it in the garbage because yuck. It was disgusting. I was like, what in the heck are you doing in my stamp room? Honestly. All right. Have we had any people say anything that I need to respond to? Hello, Elaine. And thanks, Nina. And Evelyn likes the Kirby bundle. Okay. And then Cheryl has just joined us. So hello, Cheryl. All right. So I'm going to add these leaves with some glue dots. So I'm just going to press. You see, I trimmed off the points to those leaves because I don't need them. And they may end up just causing me, giving me fits, you know, as I try to tuck some leaves under here. Um, I don't want them to be too long and cause me some fits. So we just got rid of that part. All right. So we're going to figure out how we want this to look. And then I'm going to just press down underneath here on top of those. Okay, so that's what we have so far. So I did want to go ahead and add one of these super cute flower middles, these little beaded pearls. They're so cute. And I'm going to use glue dots for those also. In fact, I'm going to actually use two glue dots because this is kind of a bigger embellishment. And how do I want this on there? Whoops. I think, well, it just flew up, kind of stuck from my hand. So there we go. Ingrid says, I use pure lanolin on dry spots like elbows and fingers. Well, I may have to do that. Oh, hello, Vicki. Another one of my team members is on here. Vicki is watching with us. Hello, Vicki. Oh, there's my sentiment. That's kind of, that was supposed to be a secret, but you've seen it, so it's probably not a secret anymore. Okay, so we have that done. I need to adhere my dainty diamonds layer to my uh, card base. So we're just going to add some seal to this and we'll just get this centered on here. There we go. Alrighty. And then, like I said, uh, we're going to use our quarter sheet of cardstock again. Color does not make any difference to this because we just want to make sure that we get this um, on here so it's not taller than this. Okay, so I'm going to add some seal to the bottom of that and then I'm going to add it to the top of this in the center okay so get that lined up and then we'll center this like so and then we can kind of press that down there and we can maybe open it up and give it a little press right there in the center <gasps> Yay! Okay, so we're done with that now. So now we have our centerpiece here, and we are going to do a little bit of stamping on that. So let me get out some ink. I've got some real red and some shaded spruce. Oh, and I did my leaves are shaded spruce. I don't think I said that, but they are. Um, I need a piece of scratch paper. Where are you, scratch paper? So I can stamp on this, but I'm going to try not to. I don't want to purposely stamp on it. Just in the event that you know like red and you know red may or may not come off sometimes red can be a little tricky so this is going to be the top and you may notice that i have a little black mark on my uh, poinsettia here poinsettia geez why is that so hard for me and i'll show you why i have that little black mark i also have a black mark on this one maybe i should put it this way i just use a sharpie after i kind of figured out how these two went together then i used a sharpie on them uh, so i know where they go together so like i just stamped this like this so now i know that this little spot with the black is going to go like that and this one i stamped it like this so i know that these two petals here and this one are where the little black one on this needs to go so i'm going to ink that up i'm going to stamp it off one time because i don't want it to be super dark just want it to have a little bit of um color to the center there not a ton and we'll get that one and then we'll do this one up here and there we go okay so we're done with the red and then i have a little sentiment where did i put it oh it's in another box hold on found it we're going to use this on another card too 
Ooh, look what I just did. There's my chamois. Okay. Wow, I thought I was going to maybe get away with not getting ink over myself today. Wrong! Okay. Let's try that again. I got a little carried away with the ink there. All right, so let's try to stamp this in the middle if we can. Oh, that's a slight bit crooked, but I'm going to leave it because, honestly, it's not that big of a deal. All right, so let me clean my stamps off so that I don't end up touching them and get, you know, more ink on my hands. And then get it onto my projects because, well, you've all seen that happen plenty of times when you watch Barb stamp. Okay, so I'm going to put these away. Oh, I need the green back, though. Hold on. Okay. Uh-oh, look. Look! Oh, my gosh. Look, look. I'm a mess. Jeez Louise, what the heck? How did that even happen? I must have touched the edge of the pad when I was closing it. Okay, hold on. Stop the presses right now. We are cleaning this entire pad off because clearly I cannot be trusted to not make a mess. Okay, I think, I mean, yeah, my fingers are going to be stained, but pff, such is the life of the stamper, right? Okay. There. We've cleaned that off. Be careful, Barb. Jeez Louise. Okay, so I have a three-quarter inch, I think, piece of paper. Uh, yes, three-quarters of an inch by about, what is it, about three and a half? It's about three and a half. And there's also a really gorgeous Merry Christmas image in this uh, set. And so we're going to use that on the card. If I can line this up, try to make it centered. Sometimes that's hard. Okay, Carol said it looks straight to her. Awesome. Okay, so then we're going to bring in this little dandy banner punch. This is the one in the big catalog, the annual catalog. We also have one um, in the holiday catalog that cuts um, like the, the snake tongues, the forked deal, which we're going to use on a different card. So um, I want this thing here. So this can cut half inch, three quarters, or one inch strips of cardstock. So mine's a three quarters. So I'm just going to slide that into those little tracks there. And I like to flip it over because I want to make sure that it's going to cut where I want it to cut. And I'm just going to snip that little bit off. And then I'm going to bring this other end in and we're going to snip that off about like so. And so that's what we have cute. I really like this. I love making fancy ends on my cards and before you used to have to like use a die or something to get kind of a fancy end and now we don't have to so that's awesome. All right so let's get oops let's get this to the inside of the card. I think I'm behind schedule right now. My daughter showed up this week from college. Um, it's only three and a half hours away so I mean she can come home whenever she wants but she doesn't always come home. Um, so I was kind of surprised to see her. So she's upstairs actually making dinner for me. Well, starting the dinner. I guess I shouldn't say making the dinner for me because honestly that probably isn't going to happen. But she's up there cooking the hamburger for me so that I can make some dinner. All right. We need to bring this ribbon from the inside of the card to the outside of the card. This is one of the ribbons that's in the annual catalog. It is called, uh, it's a real red double stitched satin ribbon. It's really pretty. And I thought it would go well with this, um, foil paper. Okay, so I'm going to use uh, glue dots here because I think my scotch tape it would be too wide for this and so I don't want the tape to be seen. Obviously, you never want the tape to be seen when you're making a card. So we are just going to use glue dots on the ends of this ribbon and that way when we bring it around to the front, we can just glue dot it on there. Okay, so we want to kind of see where we want it. So I'm actually putting it through so it's about an inch from the bottom to the top of the ribbon. Okay, and I'm just guessing. I don't have a ruler. I I very rarely really am a crazy person about measuring stuff. I mean, I would think that I would be because I'm fairly anal, but a lot of times I just eyeball stuff and that's what we're going to do. And then we're just going to put our sentiment over that and then nobody will ever even know that. So I've got some little mini glue dots. No, no, no. These are not mini glue dots. These are mini dimensionals. And I'm going to put a couple here on the ends 
and then I'm gonna go one in the middle. I probably could have just used a big one, but they were sitting here and now I don't use them as much as I use the big ones. So we're gonna show them a little bit of love. So we're gonna peel all the backings off and then we will stick it on here. Oh, thank you so much, Elaine. Elaine said my card is gorgeous. Thanks, Elaine, I appreciate that very much. <gasps> there it is, okay. So, and then you open it up and there's your inside sentiment. And of course, when you stand it on a desk, I mean, you guys can't really see it standing here, but it's gonna be cool. I probably should have used my bone folder to crease that a little bit better then it will stand better. So as long as you, if you crease it really well, it'll stand up a lot better. If you don't crease it very well, then it just wants to bleh, flop out. So there you go, card number one, done. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave these both out here for a couple seconds while I clean up my mess, because you guys know I need to have a clean area when I'm stamping because it just bugs me to no end. That I need to keep because we're using that on something else. Oh, I see I now have two boxes of glue dots out. How many glue dots do I need? Oh, you know what? Hold on, I meant to put these on there. That's why they're sitting here because I wanted to use them. Whew. Okay, I wanted to add a few of these just kind of randomly just to see how they would look. And if they don't look that good, then we'll just get rid of them. But I think they will because they're really pretty. There, there, just three is good. So there we have it. Now the card is done. Okay, put that away so that I don't, oops, I don't need these scissors either. Okay, we are now putting everything back into the bucket and cleaning off the mess so that I can move on to my next project and not have a big mess here. Okay. So we are gonna stick with the uh, poinsettia petals bundle and I have another card for you using it because it's amazing and we should just use it a lot because it's awesome. Okay, so I have a Whisper White thick card base. That's our thick, bleh, thick Whisper White, eight and a half by five and a half. Here's a piece of that amazing um, vellum paper, the plush poinsettia paper, four by five and a quarter. I have a circle die cut here. This is with our stitched shapes set of dies. This is the largest circle. I also have a piece of watercolor paper, our Fluid 100 watercolor paper. Here it is for those of you that want to see what it looks like. And then I have some other pieces here just because they're done and we we're going to do some watercoloring and we don't want to wait for it to dry. So I've already done some a little ahead of the scenes. And then I have some of this fun metallic, what is this actually called? Metallic mesh ribbon. This is so fun. It's very thin. Um, it can be used on any type of card. I've seen it on Halloween cards. I've seen it on wedding cards. I'm going to use it on a Christmas card. Um, it's just one of those things that you would look at in the catalog and go, I don't know what the heck I would do with that. But honestly, I've seen it used a lot of different ways. And so we're going to use it on this. Oh, what else do we have? We have our water painters. We need the large background water brush. <coughs> Excuse me. And some other things. But we're going to start with the water coloring here. So I've got some balmy blue ink and I'm going to squeeze that together. Thank you, Bonnie and Veronica. They said I have beautiful cards. I appreciate that very much. So I have my large water brush here. I need a rag. So here's a really old dish towel. I think my mom gave me this dish towel a hundred years ago and it's old and it's ratty, but boy, is it absorbent and I love using it for watercoloring. So, oh my, I barely have any water in here. So hopefully it's enough. So we're going to squeeze some water, just squeeze the pen where it says push. And then the water is going to kind of filter down through and into the brush right there. And we are going to add some water to the lid here. Or maybe this isn't actually the lid, the tray, I guess, of the um, ink pad and we're going to get some color on the brush. I need a little more water than that. Not quite wet enough. There we go. Okay and I am just literally going to do a background here on this piece of watercolor paper. Um, just really random. Throw it on there wherever. And I actually need it to be a tiny bit darker. So I'm going to grab my ink refill here because I don't want to squeeze my pad again because I don't want to get water all over my pad. So I'm just going to drop some ink refill in there and that way I can get it a little bit darker. There we go. Okay, so I've got it a little bit darker and then I actually want it darker, darker on one, about like one half. 
And if you don't want to do it like this, you don't have to. And if you want to copy this card, you can do whatever you want. That's the beauty of stamping. We can do anything we want. Okay. So right now it doesn't look very exciting at all. It's just some balmy blue ink on uh, some watercolor paper. And yeah, that's exciting. So I'm going to squeeze the rest of this water out of my brush so that it cleans uh, my bristles. You can see they are stained. Um, I did do a really cool um, fall card here a few, maybe like a month and a half ago. Some of you guys might remember it. It was really cool. And it did stain my brush, but whatever. So I'm going to just take this pad and move it behind me because I don't want to close it up because I don't want that water to get on my pad. And then when I'm done uh, with today's class, I'll just take a Kleenex or paper towel and blot that water out of there and get rid of it. But for right now, we're just going to move that over there. Okay, so normally you would wait for that to dry. Okay, so pretend it's dry. And then what we would do is we would take the poinsettia petals stamp which is this little guy right here and i inked it up in versamark ink voila my versamark pad is cracked but you know it still works so i'm not going to buy a new one until the pad quits working i don't care if the lid's broken so i inked that up in versamark i stamped it on my dry piece of cardstock or watercolor paper sprinkled white embossing powder on it and then I heat set it with a heat tool pretty standard stuff embossing I think most of you have probably done that before heat embossing um so yeah so then this is the die this is it in the set of dies the poinsettia petals dies and so you would then lay this over the top and because it's watercolor paper and when you get it wet it does kind of bow a little bit so it's not super flat so when i put this uh, through my uh stamp or yeah my stamp cut and emboss machine i almost forgot what i had um, i'm just going to tack it down with some washi tape and then when i run it through ta -da, i get this and so the reason i had it be darker on that one side of the paper is because i wanted a little bit of dimension on the flower um so even though it doesn't look anything special there, I think it does add a little bit of um, excitement, I guess, to my flower by having it be a little bit of a two-tone deal there. Okay, so we're going to put these back in the box. I don't need them anymore. And now I can make two more cards because I've got the supplies all ready. All right, then I also have a little half-inch strip of white cardstock. Okay, so now we just kind of need to do some assembly, and I do need to stamp one thing, which is that um, image that we just used on the card previously. So I'm going to clean the green off of it, because that's not going to look very good with our balmy blue that we have going on here. And I'm going to bring that pad back in, and I'm going to use just the pad here, and we're going to stamp. And let's see, this is like barely going to fit, so I am barely getting it to fit. Hmm. We're going to try it again on the other side, because we can. That looked a little... <coughs> oh, goodness, I've got something in my throat. Frog, isn't that what they say? I have a frog in my throat? I'm not going to press this hard. Oh, I probably should have used um, one of our... <sighs> piercing mats. To do that it probably would have gotten a better image so that one looks okay so i'm gonna put the ink pad oh look at that imagine that i touched the ink pad put the ink pad back on the desk so that it does not uh i don't make a mess with that too all right we're gonna put that away i don't need these two sentiments but i do need this so the assembly of this card is very simple we have of course the vellum paper now when you put adhesive on vellum you can usually see it but here's a little trick that I have found that works pretty good. I'm going to use a piece of sponge that um, I keep in a container. It's Talenti Gelato container. Um, and this way my glue doesn't get super dry. Um, and I'm going to use a little silicone mat and some liquid glue. And I'm just going to squirt some liquid glue. Oh no, this one's almost gone. Well, hopefully we will. Hopefully this will be enough. So what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, tap my sponge into the ink and I'm just going to kind of rub it all over this and I find that by rubbing the glue all over the paper you won't see it like if I just put some seal you know here and there to get it on to my card it would show through but if I put glue everywhere then it's not going to show 
I hope. At least it didn't show for me the last time I did this. Okay, so I'm going to center this onto my card base. There we go. And honestly, I don't think, I mean, you guys probably can't tell, but I really can't see that it, at all. So that's a really nice little trick. And then I just throw that back in the container, put the lid on. I'll set this aside, and as soon as this glue dries, I'll just be able, you can probably kind of see, I can just roll that right off. And then I'll just roll it off and throw it into the trash. Okay. So that's a good way to do that. Then we have our fun little vellum piece here and our little flower. Now our little flower, I'm going to use dimensionals. But I'm going to find this one is getting close to being used up. So I'm going to put a few on here because, again, the watercolor paper can kind of curl. Um, just It's just the nature of watercolor paper. It, it is what it is. So if we have a lot of adhesive on there, it'll help it not... Uh, curl too much and of course I don't have any fingernails to get these little guys off I know some people use a take your pick tool and I have tried that and that's even worse I have more trouble with that all right so this is going to go right in the middle or middle ish since I messed that up can I get that off and try again Ooh, I might Ooh, look at that that was kind of fun all right so this we'll try that again that's better all right so then what I thought I would do I actually had this random piece of this ribbon sitting here and so what I thought I would do with it is I thought that I would roll it and I can use tape now because my flower is in the way so I can put a piece of tape right there and you can see that no one's going to see that the tape is there and I'm going to tape this side down also I might need a tiny bit more right there okay and then I can smash this down and then I have this cool kind of I don't even know what you call it but I think it looks pretty cool so then I'm going to bring in another piece of tape and I think you want to make sure that you don't go outside the flower because your, your tape will be seen then and we don't want that that's fine then we're going to put some dimensionals on and we're going to have to put them on the ribbon so I'm kind of smashing them down really hard not there because there's tape there but where the ribbon is um, kind of open I'm kind of smashing it really hard so that it will kind of go through the ribbon and stick to the vellum okay so I'll smash those down pretty hard so they'll catch everything there for us okay and then we're gonna add this to the card mm about like that so that it's in the center and we'll press down on that stick it to that velvety stuff and then our little sentiment piece there we are going to use the other punch so i have the other banner uh punch and so this is a half inch piece of cardstock so it's going to slide right in what side did i want does that one actually look better that one actually looks better Okay, so we're going to put that down so I can see it. So I'm going to slide this in, and then I'm going to just crop the end off of that a little tiny bit more. And I always like to look at it just because I want to make sure that it's in there straight. Sometimes it can go cattywampus on you and you don't even realize it, um, and then you'll get kind of a wonky, a wonky edge there. I don't want a wonky edge. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of put this across to my flower and I think I'm going to use now yeah, we'll use seal that'll work you can hear my family upstairs like I said my daughter's here so her and my husband are up there chit-chatting of course they're not being the quietest people while I'm trying to do a live Facebook event but what can I do all right I need these little doohickeys again because we're going to put another little doohickey in the middle of this so we're going to use a couple of glue dots. Oops. Oh, Roy Alia is here. Roy Alia is also on my team. Hello, Roy Alia. Gosh, you guys, I have a lot of my team members watching me tonight. That's awesome. Hello, girls. Welcome. I'm so excited that you're here. Okay. There we go. So we've got that in the center. And isn't that just pretty? This velvety paper just really kind of gives it a sense of elegance. You know what I'm saying? And then this, this fun ribbon, it's just a little bit of sparkle. So I'm just really digging that stuff right now. Okay. 
So I'll leave that there for a second. And I have to show you, this is a card that I made for a swap. And I made this last month. It was a swap that I did a month ago. And I was going to actually copy it exactly today for you guys. But I decided that I wanted to use this paper instead of an embossed background. So I wanted to show off this paper a little bit. But it's basically the same. This center, I used some rhinestones. The center here, I used um, the beaded pearls. Of course, here's that same ribbon. I just have it hidden underneath my flower so you can't see the ends. Um, but yeah, they're there. Lots of fun. Okay, we don't need that. We can get rid of that. Ooh, and I'll show you. Look at that. My glue is dry. So look at that. I can literally just rub that off. So I have a big glue booger here, and I'll just toss it in the trash. And there's literally no mess doing that method with the sponge. So some of you have probably seen that a million times. Some of you maybe have never seen it before. So if you haven't and you learned a new trick, yay. Okay, our last project. We are going to make a fall card. Let me move these out of the way here. We're going to use this fun uh, plaid tidings paper. And I'm going to use this piece here. This kind of this piece honestly intimidated me when I was first looking through the pack. I was kind of thinking to myself, whoa, that is, whoa. It's very bright, very loud. And I didn't know if I would ever do anything with it. But today, for some reason, it was speaking to me. So we're going to use it. Okay. So we're going to use Melon Mambo and a piece of that paper which is right there. I've already cut it. I'll give you the measurements here in a second. Uh, we're going to, so in this paper, in my opinion, is Melon Mambo, uh, Bumblebee, and Blackberry Bliss. Okay, so there's a piece of Blackberry Bliss. There's a white, a Blackberry. And we're using the Love of Leaves bundle. And this bundle is very similar to the Snowflake or to the Poinsettia bundle in that you use two dies to create this leaf with the stitched center. Okay, so you can use the die, the outline of the die, just to crop out the leaf by itself. And then you can put the um, inside piece in, just like I showed you in the poinsettias, to make this detailed stitching. And they're called the stitched leaves dies. And that's why, because they do this really cool thing. So I cut a leaf out of Blackberry Bliss, Bumblebee, and the Melon Mambo. Okay, so what do we have here? We are going to make a kind of a, this is a card that I actually... Again, I was going through this bucket of things that I save, and I found this template that I had used. Well, maybe I can find it here for you. In a class many, many years ago. It's so old that this is pistachio pudding cardstock that I have, that I used because we used, uh, the card that we made was pistachio pudding. Um, so this is like probably five years old. So anyways, I found this template and I thought, oh my gosh, we're going to make one of these cards. So that's what we're going to do. So we have an eight and a half by five and a half piece of melon mumble cardstock. Easy piece. I have our delightful tag topper punch. We also have a scalloped tag topper punch, which was what was used on this particular card. So you see they have this nice little slot there for the ribbon, the fun little scalloped edge there. And we still sell that punch, but this is a newer punch and I wanted to try it out. So we are going to slide our piece of cardstock now, obviously, this punch is designed to put in, you know, one inch, one and a half, and two inch strips of cardstock to make a tag. No problem. But what we're going to do is we're going to slide the entire piece of cardstock in there all the way to the back. And I'm going to line it up with the edge of the punch right here. Okay, this gray edge of the punch. So I've got that in there. I've lined it up. It's pressed all the way to the back. And that's what we get. So now I'm going to rotate this around. And I'm going to slide it back in. I want to make sure that I'm on the same side of the cardstock, okay? Because you don't want this piece down here at this end so that they're uh, diagonal from each other. You want them the same. So we flipped it over. We've scooted this cardstock all the way to the bottom. Push that over so it's lined up flush with the edge of the punch. And then we're going to punch. And of course, if you want to do these are paper cutter and ruler it all out and everything you sure can but that's just not for me okay but now we are going to use a paper cutter to cut and score this thing so what we want to do is we want to cut off this piece here and this little piece here so I'm going to bring this over to my trimmer and I'm going to put this little opening here this little notch I can see the track of my trimmer in there okay 
And so I'm going to move that just away. So I'm going to bring my blade up and it's got little markings on it. And I can see, um, you probably can't see, but I can see, and if it was your trimmer, you'd be able to see that I'm just going to be able to chop that right off. So I'm going to place that here right at the edge of my cardstock there and push up and get that piece off. Okay, and I'm going to flip that around. I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to find that little gusset there in the track. And I'm going to do the exact same thing again. I'm going to cut that up. Oop, that one I cut a little off. But that is totally fine. And then we'll find that one and cut down. Okay, so this is what we have now. We have this funny piece of cardstock with these two little ends. Well, one of these little ends needs to have a score line on it. So we're going to line this up so that the edge of the cardstock is in the track. I'm going to get my cutting blade out of the way and I'm going to score that, okay? So that I can fold that over like so. Then the last thing we need to do is this part of the card needs to be four and a quarter inches. Okay, so I'm going to turn this around. I'm going to line up this edge at the four and a quarter mark. I'm going to follow it down here and I'm going to score it again. I had to think in my mind if that was correct. So this half is four and a quarter with the tab folded over. And then this piece will fold over this way. And then these two tabs just about touch. Okay. So let me get that out of the way. And clearly I need to change the blade on my trimmer because we have got some fuzzy edges there. So I'm going to use some scissors here and just kind of snip up and get those little fuzzy edges off. Okay, so that's what we have so far. So our card is now four and a quarter by five and a half. Okay, so then I have a, what is this? This is, <coughs> excuse me, four and an eighth by five and three eighths piece of Blackberry Bliss. Where's my seal? Here we go. So we're going to add that to the inside of the card. Okay, this inside panel here. And I'm a little bit strange and I do this thing where I only line up these three sides, the bottom, the side, and the top. Because if it's off on the inside here, it's not going to matter because it's all pink. And so if you open that up and this happened to be crooked, you'd never notice. But you might notice if it was crooked on these three sides. Okay, so then we have a white piece and we're going to do a tiny bit of stamping on that. So I've got two of the leaf images from the stamp set. I have some Blackberry Bliss ink and some Bumblebee ink. And I also have uh, the Melon Mambo because we've got to stamp a sentiment that is in there too. So in the stamp set, we're using this little leaf here and this leaf here. We're using this, your friendship is something I know I can count on for the inside of the card. And then we're using the, I'm so glad you're in my life for the outside of the card. Ooh, Nina says this plaid paper is one of her faves. Yay, then you should love this card, Nina. Where is my scrap paper that I stamp on? Does anybody see it? Barb, what are you doing? No, I'm just bringing another piece here. Okay, so I want this leaf to be in Bumblebee. So I'm going to ink that up. And just kind of stamp it right here on the edge. And then this guy is going to be in Blackberry Bliss. And he's going to be about like so. So just a tiny little bit just up in the corner. And of course, if it's your card, you can do whatever you want with it. You can put your stamping anywhere. Now I have my sentiment here for the inside. And we're going to ink that up. And the crazy thing about this card is if you put... Well, the sentiment's not huge, obviously. If it was all the way across the card, then you'd be able to see it. But this little sentiment isn't super wide. So it's going to fit in here just perfectly. Okay, there we go. Oh, Cheryl's asking you guys to give me some thumbs ups. Thank you, Cheryl. <laughs> Cheryl's my cheerleader today. Go, Barb! Go, Barb! All right. So we're going to add that. And then we'll do this. Okay. A little bit of glue there. So now we have the inside done. Then this little space here, I can't remember. So I'm going to say it again. My Blackberry Bliss is two and a quarter by five. And it's, actually it's five and five sixteenths, but I think five and three eighths would work if that's, if you're not into three, if you're not into sixteenths. Some people hate working with sixteenths of an inch, and I don't blame them because it can be kind of a pain. Okay, 
So this is just going to have a little bit of a border here. Then our designer series paper. Whoops, not centimeters. I don't roll like that. This is two and one sixteenth by five and three sixteenths. I will try to remember to put these measurements in the description of the video, but I'm actually really terrible at that. So if I don't do it and you guys think about it and you want them, remind me. Or maybe what I'll do is maybe I'll actually put this card on my blog. Sometimes I put these cards on my blog and sometimes I don't. Uh, I just sometimes run out of time um, to do that. But this one I think I might because it's actually going to be really cool. Okay, so we have that done. So I thought the bumblebee ribbon would work perfectly to tie these little pieces together. So we're going to do that. We're going to bring our bumblebee in here. And what the heck? Do I have a piece in here? I thought I had a piece already cut. What did I do with it? Well, you know how it is. You think you have something and you've lost it. And yeah, well, whatever. Okay. So we're going to kind of line, make this nice. So I'm going to pull it through the holes and get it so it's nice and flat. And I'm going to start my bow like I would tie my shoe like this. But then I'm going to turn the card. This is kind of crazy, but I really find that my bows look a lot better if I do this. And then I take this piece and then I wrap this end around. If you have your card the other direction, then you would be wrapping it the other way. And the tails are going to go a different direction. So I find that if I do this, let me show you. Oh, this is my piece of ribbon. It was stuck on there. So then my tails are going to come down this way nicely, just the way I like them. Now, of course, a person's going to have to open this. Oh, look at that. I lied. My uh, piece does show. I think it wouldn't have showed if I had moved these up, but I didn't, and it is what it is. We're going to just go with it because it's a super cute card, and who cares? Okay, so now I'm going to trim the ends off of this. I'm going to leave them a little bit long, like not super short. Okay, so we can get that out of the way. We're going to bring our leaves back in. And our piece of cardstock. This is, I think, three quarters of an inch. Yeah, three quarters of an inch. And we're going to use the Mellow Mambo again. And then we're going to use this where it says, I'm so glad you're in my life. Okay, we're going to try to center it, make it nice and good. Pam says she makes her bows upside down also. Cool. I find that it works really well, honestly, you guys. Okay. So this little guy, we're going to use that same uh, banner punch, but we're going to use, oh, these things are glaring. We're going to use the kind of like arrow um, end this time. So I'm going to slide that in, make sure it's centered. I think that looks fine. Do the other end. See, now you can tell that's not, that's like cattywampus, but I want to make sure. And if I wasn't looking at it from the bottom, I wouldn't have noticed that. Okay. So I always try to look at my punches from the bottom to make sure that they're right. You know what? I bet I could probably cover that up so you wouldn't be able to see it. Hee <laughs> Tricky, huh, Barb? Okay, so I have all these leaves. And this is the only thing I hadn't quite figured out was how I wanted to go about sticking them on the card. I hadn't quite figured that out. But I think that I'm just going to kind of group them together and call it good. Actually, I might do it. If I did it down here, I could probably get that to cover that up. Let's do that. Okay. So we're going to add this leaf first so we can cover up our sentiment that is peeking out that I didn't think would, but it is. I said I didn't care, but I'm a liar. I do care. Okay. So if I stick my leaf like that, <laughs> tricky. No one's going to see it. Then I'm going to put my sentiment piece on with a couple of dimensionals. And then I'm going to tuck these other leaves underneath. Okay. Isn't this fun? I am loving this. With, yeah, this plaid paper is now making me happy. I'm liking it. I didn't really like it before. All right, I'm going to move that up just a bit. Like so? Is that going to look stupid? You're probably going to say, oh, no, it won't look stupid, Barb, but... It might. Okay, we're gonna. So I'm gonna cut out these little stems because they're gonna kind of be in my way, I think. I don't want them to show through the bottom. And actually, since I put my dimensionals on there, I'm gonna have to cut more off. But that's quite all right. We can just cut off as much as we need to. I wonder if I could do one underneath. How'd that look? Would that look dumb? What do you guys think? 
I think I'm going to go for it. I think I am. Okay. You could use dimensionals to pop them up if you want, but I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to tuck that one underneath. And I'm going to take this little guy and tuck it on the bottom. And then the last thing I have to do is to color some rhinestones to make them pink. Because I thought some pink rhinestones would look really fun on this. Okay. So we've got a Melon Mambo Dark Stampin' Blend marker. And I already have some of these colored. I've got three, but I think I'm going to go with five. So I'm going to color two more and I'm just using the bullet tip and I'm just very gently kind of going around these little gems. So I'm not trying to tear up the tip of my marker. So I'm just very gently uh, going around there and making them dark melon mambo. Then I'm going to bring my take your pick tool in and we're going to slide these little guys off and we're just going to kind of randomly place them wherever I think that I might want them. Where else? Down here, maybe? Go with a couple. One there, one there. Ooh, what if it was over here? That's kind of fun, don't you guys think? <gasps> Yay, then we have our little sentiment inside. I am just, I'm really happy with that now that I <laughs> got that paper out and used it. So there you go. So there's, let me put these things away. Let me bring in the rest of the cards so you can see them all. And while I'm doing that, um, I am going to load this onto YouTube. So if you are on YouTube watching me, please give my video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel down here in the corner and click the notification bell so you can be notified when I upload new videos. If you're on Facebook, give it a like, like my page, place your orders with me at shoppingwithbarb.com. I would appreciate that very much. So here is the card that we actually made today using the poinsettia petals. Now remember, I do have a uh, kit to go with that. It's in the description of the video. Um, this is a card that I had made a couple days ago, or actually last month, I lied. It was last month. This is an inspiration card that I used to create this one here using, again, the poinsettia petals bundle with our gorgeous red foil sheets. So there's my shopping information. If you guys would order for me, I'd greatly appreciate it. Um, and until next week, I will see you guys later, so have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.